guys, it is Thursday, and it is a little bit, bit past 11 a.m. Pacific Standard, so you know what that means if you've been hanging out with me for the last 18 weeks. Yes, believe it or not, this is episode 18 of From Ordinary to Extraordinary, where every single week we explore the psychology and the strategies of ultimate performance, mastery, genius, greatness, uh, allowing you, potentially, as you apply these things, to have an entire life and business turnaround to really create the life that you desire and deserve. Now, this topic today, I've entitled The Most Powerful Force in the Universe. The greatest power in the universe. And it may be something different than you think it is. And unless you read some of the copy, then you may know what we're going to talk about here. But it's one of my favorite topics, actually. You know, if you remember me from The Secret, you might remember that I was the guy that brought up this topic in The Secret because I've had a practice with this technique, skill, psychology for most of my life. And I'm going to encourage you here today to do that in your life as well. If you aren't doing it, if you are doing it, I'm going to encourage you to continue. So let me ask you this question. Are you grateful for all the gifts that life gives you? Are you grateful just for the gift of life itself? Not romantic life, not perfect life, but life itself. Now, as you ponder that, I want to just um, put out some of my gratitude to several of you as part of this community who shared our session last week. And, you know, I want to just put out a, a big thank you to John Musil. Hopefully I said your last name right, John. To Joan Lee McFadden. Thank you for sharing last week with your tribe, with your friends and family. Ella Florence, Ruby Manjuano. <laughs> if I butcher your name, forgive me, please, but I am grateful. Michelle Richards, Tommy Allen Rains, Sean Morse, Tommy Poe, Tammy, Tammy, yeah, did you hear her whisper, Tammy? Tammy Posey Lell, Marta Reyes, uh, Alo Hanavar Kumar, Deborah Twist, Anthony Rogers, Thank you, thank you, thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for sharing. You know, if this lesson, if these sessions and episodes make an impact on you, then you can make an impact on those that you love and care about. Help me help you help people that you love and care about. Now, as always, you can post your comments and your questions down below, and I'll ask, answer them in real time if we have that opportunity here. I love to do that. And by the way, we're live, so take advantage of it. If you've missed some past episodes, then you can always scroll forever for 18 weeks down through the Facebook feed and find them, or you can just more efficiently go to jamesray.com forward slash live dash cast jamesroy.com slash live dash cast and we've got them all posted there for your enjoyment betterment and growth so i come back to the question are you grateful for all the gifts that life affords you all of them i ask you to ponder that and to be really honest because you see there there's no value in telling ourselves lies you know, I mean, we have to have a brutal honesty with our own self. That's part of self-awareness, which is a big part of life, growth, expansion, consciousness, and resilience, by the way. See, good times are good. Good times are good. I like them. I'm sure you do, too. But tough and challenging times potentially make you great. You get that? It's easy to be grateful for the good times. And good times are good. You know, I've had many good times. And I intend to have many more. And what has to happen for you to turn the tough and challenging times into good times as well? Because those are the times that potentially make you great. I, I wrote my very first book in the late 90s, entitled The Science of Success. And 
I do a fair amount of corporate speaking. You know, a lot of different businesses hire me to come in and talk with their, at their annual convention or with their sales teams or, or whatever. And I was going to talk at a large convention with a sales team. It was their annual sales meeting. And so I was talking to the director of sales, and one of the things that I often offer in advance is for the company to purchase copies of my book to give them out as gifts to all the attendees. That way they can take a resource home and they can continue to grow and to study and to learn. So at that time, my Science of Success book was just out and I sent him a copy for his review. And I said, hey, take a look at it. If you enjoy it, if you think it's beneficial, I'll call you back and maybe you can buy copies for all your sales team. He said, okay, there's gonna be several hundred people there. So I called him back a few weeks later and I said, hey, did you get the book? He said, yes. I said, did you have a chance to read it? He said, yes. And I said, what do you think? He goes, well, I really like it actually. He said, and I've got a question for you. He said, I, I, I thought this was a book on success. I said, yes. That's true, it is. And he said, but you have an entire chapter on gratitude. <laughs> he said, what the hell does gratitude have to do with success? Now, obviously I was in a sales interaction with a, with a future client, so I didn't really get into coach mode, but inside I thought, you know what? You just don't get it. You just don't get it. Because, you see, success without fulfillment, success without gratitude, is not success at all. And I'm going to submit to you today, bar none, that the most powerful, magnetic, attractive force in the universe is gratitude. And this is not just some airy-fairy, soft idea. This, you know, there is science now to back this up. Neurosciences now proves to us, the field of positive psychology now proves to us that you literally build new neurological connections in your marvelous brain by practicing gratitude, having a regular gratitude practice. Now, I wanna, I wanna get into this in some depth and detail because here's an un, undeniable fact. You maybe aren't gonna like it. You know, in fact, a lot of times I don't like it. But an undeniable fact is that some of the greatest gifts in life come wrapped in pain. Have you found that to be true? You see, most of us are pretty good in retrospect, looking back across and go, oh, wow, I learned a lot, I grew a lot, I became a better person because of that difficult situation. You see, mastery is about doing it in the moment. You with me? I'm not saying it's easy. In fact, it, mental work, psychological work, is the most difficult work you will ever, ever do. It, it's, you know, I, I've gone to the gym religiously since I was, you know, in my early 20s, and I've had some really tough workouts, but no matter how tough the workout, you know, I have climbed 17,000 feet to the top of Sulkin Tai in Peru, one of the highest peaks in Peru. That was tough. I had cramps every night. I was thinking I was insane for ever choosing to do this. Tough workouts physically, but I can promise you that bar none, whatever physical activity I've ever been involved in, pulling long hours, uh, whatever it is, is not even close to the mental workout and the mental discipline and the mental focus and the mental resilience that it takes to become masterful. You see, it's really easy to be grateful for the roses, right? I mean, and, and I, am, I am grateful for roses. Roses are beautiful. And yet mastery is about being grateful for the thorns. Because from a higher perspective, what a masterful individual realizes, or a person on a, on a path of mastery realizes, is that it's the thorns that strengthen the system. It's the thorns that strengthen and protect the system. And so, you know, are you able to do this? If you are, congratulations. Could you be better? You know, I could. I'll straight up admit, I could be better at it. 
because it's a constant exercise. It's a constant exercise. But you see, in these difficult situations, and I don't know where you are right now in your life and in your business, you might be facing some really tough times right now. And, by, you know, I get it. I get it. And I'm never going to minimize your challenges ever, ever. Are we off? Okay, you're off. Sorry. Are we back? <laughs> Technical difficulties. What I was saying is that, and thanks for hanging in. What I was saying is that I will never, ever, ever minimize your challenges. Because it's all relative. Every, everyone's challenge, biggest challenge, is their biggest challenge. And the only difference between you and me, if there ever is a difference, is a difference of degree. And so, you know, challenging times are really difficult. But what I can promise you is that it's these tough and challenging times that makes you bigger, stronger, bolder, more resilient. It builds the mental muscle if you will make that work for you. You're not going to do that in the Rose Garden. You're going to appreciate the beauty in the Rose Garden. But, you know, getting yourself out of the thorns is going to toughen you. And, and somehow, some way, you find a strength within you. You get to learn what you're really, truly made of. And it's in these circumstances and situations that you find a power that works through you versus from you. Big difference. You get the difference? It comes through you versus coming from you. Because you only have a, a certain amount of finite power to come from you. But you have an infinite amount of power to come through you. As you become a greater and greater vehicle, vessel, conduit for the unlimited energy that science tells us is in this universe. Does that sound mystical to you? Yeah, it, it kind of does. Is it practical? <laughs> I, I can promise you it's the epitome of pragmatism. You know, look at Stephen Kotler's research on extreme athletes. You know, I mean, these guys that do crazy ass stuff that, 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 it seem impossible. Jumping off of cliffs and climbing mountains and Danny Way jumping over the Great Wall of China on a skateboard. You know, all these extreme athletics and Kotler's research proves in his study of these athletes is that what they all recognize at the point where they're pushing against the impossible, the seemingly impossible, is that the work is being done. They're not the one doing the work. Now, now I know this is mystical, but I, but I promise you, if you've ever been in the flow state, then you know what I'm talking about. You know, you can read research on the flow state, and you recognize that when you get into the flow state, things are happening through you, not from you. You are kicking ass, but you uh, you understand you're not the one doing the kicking. Now that doesn't that please let's not get romantic and say okay well then James I don't have to do anything. Someone reached out to me on Facebook um, just yesterday and said hey I'm reading I'm reading this particular author and he's saying you don't have to really take any action you just have to kind of visualize and and be open and let it happen through you. What do you think? <laughs> and I I said to him because he had a really nice six pack right on his Facebook picture. And I said, hey man, nice abs. Did you just visualize them? Or did you do something? <laughs> and I said, oh, and by the way, you know, did you just visualize that you were, that I was going to send you a message or did you have to do something? And he came in and he goes, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. You see, I'm not, I'm not advocating romanticism, please. I'm never going to do that. Please remember, you know, 60% of the word attraction is action, right? Attra action. And, and so, you know, we've got to do things. We've got to prepare ourselves. And we've got to do the psychological mental work to become a conduit. So that ass can be kicked through us, if you will, versus from us. So that, so that infinite power can come through us 
versus from us. Because if everything's coming from us just through sheer personal willpower, that's finite. I mean, research proves this true as well. You have a finite amount of will. But universal will is infinite. I hope this is tracking with you because this is really, really important. And it all ties back into gratitude because gratitude is going to help you become that vessel. Gratitude is going to help you become that conduit. Gratitude, in my experience, is a connection, is a plugging into God. It's, it's sending a message out into the universe that says, thank you for this. Please send me more. You see, when you're focused on what's good and God and gifts, you're saying, thank you for this. Regardless of how large or small it might be, please send me more. Thank you for this. I'm so incredibly grateful for this. And, and you know, these kind of people, if you know them, that focus on the best and are grateful. And I'm not talking about painted on smile people, <laughs> you know, plastic people. I'm talking about real people who are truly grateful. They're, they're a joy to be around. You know, you know, how many times do you like me know someone and they can get everything they think they want and they can still find something wrong with it? Right? Well, I, I want to do this. And then they get this, and then there's something wrong with that. And, and I want to go here. And then they go here, and then there's something wrong with that. I, I call those pothole people. <laughs> right? And the metaphor I like to use is, is imagine a perfect city, and everything is perfectly groomed, and everything is perfectly decorated, and all the buildings are perfectly designed, and it's just gorgeous. But there's, one, there's only one thing. There's a, there's a pothole in the middle of Main Street. You know? And what most people will do, the majority of people, the pothole people, is they'll go, yeah, it's a pretty city, but you know, there's a pothole in the middle of Main Street. What the grateful people will do is they'll go, hey, you know, I mean, they know there's always going to be a pothole. There's always going to be some kind of snag, but let's focus on all the beauty and all the gifts and all the God that's around us. We're not going to ignore the pothole. We're just not going to put a lot of attention upon the pothole. We're going, to, we're going to take care of the pothole. We'll get it filled in. We're not going to be romantic and go, oh, the pothole doesn't exist. Well, of course the pothole exists. But I'm not going to focus all my attention on that. I'm going to give a little bit of attention on that. And I'm going to address that. But I'm going to focus on the beauty in the meantime. You follow the metaphor. The people who find the beauty are a joy to be around. And you want to help them. You want to spend time with them. Look, we all face challenges. And, and the fact is that heroes are only heroes after they've overcome incredible odds. Right? You want to be heroic? Then you've got to overcome incredible odds. You've got to stare them down and have the resilience and the strength to get through them. And you've got to focus on all your good and your God and your gifts. And you've got, you got to allow that to come through. You're going to go, yeah, this is hard. But guess what? Life can often be hard. I mean, what we're talking about here, as well as gratitude, and gratitude will help with this, is building resilience. It, you're going to be hearing a lot more about resilience from me. I mean, straight up, I, I've started to become kind of an expert in resilience. And many people tell me that that's the truth. And I, I, I believe it probably is. And the reason is because of what I've been through. It, it, and it's not easy. It's not easy to keep the faith and to hold the vision when things are tough. You know, becoming resilient and continuing to be grateful is the hardest work you'll ever do. It's not for sissies. It's not for whiners and for little babies. You know, if you want, if you want to whine and moan and be a little sissy baby, you know, then, then I, I can't help you. I'm not minimizing your challenges. God knows I've had a lot of them. And God knows there's been times where I've whined and I felt sorry for myself. And I had to grab myself by the nape of the neck and get my act together and get my head on and get my game face back on and get going. Because you see, 
that's resilience. And, and I'm, you know, I'm actually working on a brand new couple of products, um, programs, tools, resources on resilience right now. You're going you're to see them on Facebook soon, so keep your eyes open. But I will tell you that resilience is like a muscle. And the more you exercise it, the greater and the stronger it becomes. It's only developed by pushing against greater odds. And so, you know, for me, the last seven years of my life have been the most painful, the most difficult in my entire existence. And, and yet, I have grown tremendously. You know, I, I, I know I've become a better human being. I've become a better man. I become more compassionate. I become more awake. I become more aware. You know, I can connect with you on deeper levels because you see, that's the only way for us to truly connect is through our common experiences. And so it hadn't been easy, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And here's one for your notes. Pain is the mother of all growth. There's a law, one of the seven laws of the universe is called the law of correspondence. And the law of correspondence states, if you want to know how anything works, look at how something else works. So, you know, I, I like to go to physical exercise as a metaphor. You know, if you're going to grow strong, a strong body, you're going to have to push against greater weights. You're going to have to push against greater resistance. You're going to have to do it frequently. You're going to have to be committed. You're going to have to go several times a week. You're going to have to watch your diet. You're going to have to get enough recuperation and rest. You know, so consequently, does that apply to growing your business? You bet it does. Does it apply to growing your life? You bet it does. So, who do you want to be? See, life is often tough. And sometimes you're going to feel like it shits on you, quite frankly. And so, what I'm going to challenge you to do is, when life shits on you, use it as fertilizer. <laughs> right? Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Go, oh my God, I'm so grateful that I'm getting doused in fertilizer right now. Thank you, God. It's making me bigger, bolder, faster, stronger, wiser. Bring on the fertilizer, you know. <laughs> and, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm being somewhat facetious here, but that's what it takes. That's what it takes. You know, I'll tell you a really great response in my experience when people ask me how I'm doing. I like to say I'm moving in the right direction. You know, because I can say I'm moving in the right direction even when I'm in a shit storm. I, I can say I'm moving in the right direction even when everything's going sideways. Because I recognize at a deeper level that the only way to get beyond it is to go through it. I hope that makes sense to you. You see, the majesty of a mountain peak is only majestic, only majestic because of its contrast against the empty sky and the depth of the valley it stands above. Now you follow the metaphor? You know, we want to celebrate the mountain peak. We want to celebrate the highs. But it's only a high, it's only a peak, it's only majestic because of the empty sky that it stands against. Emptiness. Like in your bank account. <laughs> right? And the depth of the valley, as in sorrow and despair, that it's, it rises above. And so, you know, if we're going to scale the mountains of power and we're going to scale the mountains of potential, then we're going to have to have an empty sky and a depth of valley to stand above and to stand against. You follow that? I mean, even a cursory study of quantum physics, which I love, you know, one of these days we're going to get into some quantum physics here on From Ordinary to Extraordinary, because I just, I love quantum physics, because it has application to our daily life. But one of the things we understand in quantum physics is that creation and destruction are two opposite poles of the same dance. For anything to be created, something also has to be destroyed. And it's happening all the time at the subatomic level, which is the basis of everything. 
You know, when something gets destroyed in your life, it's okay to mourn the loss. And I would encourage you to do that. And then you've got to become grateful for the new emergent. If you understand that for anything new to be created, something has to be destroyed, then you can mourn the loss, but then flip and get grateful, mourn the loss. You're a human, you have a right to do that. But then flip and get grateful for the new emergent. And you go, well, James, what is that emergent? I don't know. And you don't know, but what we do know is that something new is emerging in this continuous dance of life. I, I could talk about this for a long, long time. And again, we've kind of hit on a lot of topics here, but it all comes back to what I'm going to encourage you to do is to develop a gratitude practice because put this in your notes. Only when you find heaven in the midst of hell is heaven truly found. Think about that. When you can find heaven in the midst of hell, then you really found heaven because, you know, the Christian prophet told us the kingdom of heaven is within. He didn't say it's on a cloud. He said the kingdom of heaven is within. And so therefore, the kingdom of hell has to be in the same place, in within. In the within. Now you understand why I contis consistently remind you that the door to success opens inward, right? Because heaven and hell, that's where it is. And when we can find heaven in the midst of hell, then we truly, truly found it. You know, once what was once just nice information transform into transforms into understanding. And then understanding transforms into experience. And experience transforms into wisdom. When you got wisdom, you got it. Because in wisdom, there is nothing for which to not be grateful. In wisdom, there is nothing to not be grateful for. Now, I got five, four quick tips I'm going to give you, as I always do, to, to reel this in. But I think we have a live question, right, from Raja. What can we do if we don't get what we want? How to overcome disappointment? It, thank you, Raja. It's a great question. What do we do when we don't get what we want? Well, guess it's going to happen to all of us. And here's what I can promise you, Raja. I didn't want to go to prison, all right? I really did not want to go to prison. I practiced every spiritual practice. I used every magical mojo. I used all the esoteric training I have had to try to avoid that fate. It didn't work. It didn't work. Now that I've made it through that, I'm grateful because now I don't want to do it again. <laughs> Hell no. You know, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But let me promise you this. As I look back across it, about it now, and here I am, you know, I'm talking with you, Raja, and everyone else who's here. Um, it, it was two years. Felt like 20 at the time. But two years in the, is a blip in the ocean of a lifetime. And so for me now, I'm grateful because I, I, I learned so much about humanity. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about our government and our system. I learned so much about the, the ways I've been programmed and we've all been programmed in the United States. And Roger, I'm not sure where you're from, but you have programming from where you're from as well. And, and I'm going to, you know... India, where, wherever. By the way, I'm, I'm uh, supposed to be coming to India in 2017. Hold, just hang on for that one. But nonetheless, and I'm looking really forward to it. Um, but nonetheless, you're going to not get what you want. And let me just quote the Buddha. I love the Buddha. You know, once they, I started studying Buddhism when I was 18 years old in the household of a, a Protestant minister, which is kind of weird, right? <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, 
You know, they asked the Buddha once, why don't you teach your students to pray? And he said, my students are not awake enough to know what to pray for. Wow. How many times have you, like me, gotten what you think you want, and when you get it, you're like, oh my God, this is, this is not what I want. You know, this is not what I thought it was going to be. My students are not awake enough to, get what, to, to know what to pray for. And then he continued, but what I can assure you is that when you awaken, there is nothing to pray for. Now, what's he saying? Well, I didn't get to meet him because that would mean I'm, I was really old. But, but, you know, I've met him in my studies and I've met him in my meditation. And what I believe he is saying is that it's all good. It's all God. It's all gifts. Because there's a grander plan, Raja, and that's not easy. You know, we, we, we've often heard everything happens for a reason. But the, the, the big challenge is waiting for the reason to appear right? So, so I get it. It's not easy. But how do you overcome disappointment? Well, first and foremost, you feel your disappointment. Feel it. Feel it. Because stuffing feelings is not healthy. It shows up as cancer and heart disease and all kinds of other physical maladies. Feel the feeling. Feel, be disappointed. Sit on the couch and cry. You know, mourn. Remember I said to you, when you have a loss, mourn. Mourn. That's part of being human. And what you'll realize is that because everything in this universe is temporary, both the up and the down, the good and the bad, that it will pass. And as you mourn and you give it its voice and you allow it to come out and you release that out into the universe, then you get back and you go, all right, now. Let me find the gift here. Let me decide what I'm going to do with it. Let me use this as fuel to grow a greater future. I hope that helps. Really good question, and it's one we all deal with. So, we have another question. Is ta I like this. Chanel, is taking small steps towards our biggest goals effective? Chanel, excellent question. The let me just answer it with this. Put this in your notes. Incremental gains change the world. You see, we all want to know, if you go down to the subatomic, I told you I love physics, you go down to the subatomic level, you know, a quantum leap is massive at the subatomic level, but if you were to bring that leap up into the third dimension, it'd be about not even maybe that far, you know? So we all want quantum leaps, whatever the hell that means. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. You know, in my, in my life in business, um, sometimes things have just gone bam. You know, in 2006, when The Secret came out and, and Larry King called and Oprah called, it was like bam, boom, my business exploded. And it was like a quantum leap. However, in wisdom, what you recognize is that there was about 20 years before that, that I was grinding and I was working and I was, I was, you know, living on credit cards and faith cookies, you know, and, and I was making incremental steps, small little steps every single day. You see, if you make, if you make one small gain every single day, that gives you 30 gains in a month. 30 gains is, is, is pretty damn big. You know, not to even think about, you know, making two gains a day or three, you know. And I wouldn't say don't go for 30 because that's just not going to happen. But, you know, three, you could maybe have three gains a day, right? Three small gains, small gains every single day. Three small wins every single day. Two small wins every single day is 60 wins in a month, right? You multiply that over a year and you're, you're kicking ass, you know, three small wins every single day is 90 wins in a month. You, you get in the magnitude of this incremental gains change the world. You know, when I, last time I was in Paris, uh, you can go to the top of the Eiffel tower 
And you can take an elevator if you're an elevator person, but I'm gonna encourage you to be a stair person. You know, I think there's 665 stairs that go to the top of the Eiffel Tower. And that's a lot of stairs. How do you get to the top of the Eiffel Tower? One step at a time. How did I get to the top of Solkentai at 17,000 feet? One step at a time. Incremental gains change the world. So the, bit, the long answer to your question is yes, absolutely. Small gains every single day. And that's why I teach my one-on-one -on -one clients to put down, you know, six things that they're going to accomplish every single day before they go to bed every night. And I've done this for years. I, I, this is like, I don't even think about it. It's just a habit. It's just, it's just on what psychologists call automaticity for me. I don't have to think about it every night. I don't care if I'm going to get four hours of sleep. I'll sit down and I will write out my critical six, the six things I got to get done tomorrow to move me towards my long-term vision and outcome. And it's just a habit. I, you know, if I happen to forget some night and I'm laying in bed, I'm already under the covers and it's cold, uh, it comes to me and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot. How could I forget that? I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to go. You know, it's just like brushing my teeth. I would never go to the bed without brushing my teeth. And so, you know, just set yourself some action items that you can accomplish every single day. And then just get it done. So listen, I've got four tips we're 40 minutes here, so we're getting long. Do we have another question? While you're writing it down, I'll, I'll get to it. I don't want to go too long because the attention span of a goldfish is what most people have here. But you know what? If they're bailing out, then they'll miss the best stuff. Four tips that I want to give you on developing gratitude, resilience, and creating the life you desire and deserve. Number one, see things clearly. Let me quote the Buddha again. Buddha stated the cause of all suffering is that most do not see clearly. People do not see life clearly, exactly as it is. Now, I know you, like me, know someone who is constantly trying to wear rosy-colored glasses and paint life differently than it is. See life clearly. Feel your feelings. See the pothole. You're just not going to focus all your energies on the pothole. You're going. You're see see the fact that you have debt. But you're not going to focus all your energies on debt. You're going to focus all your energies on income creation. You're going to put in, into place a debt retirement plan that's on autopilot, hopefully auto withdrawal, and, and then you forget about it. You just let that run. You hire the crew to fill the pothole. You forget about the pothole, and you focus on all the good and the gifts and the opportunities, right? See clearly first. And then number two, when life hits you with a hard left hook, which it will, if it's not now, that's great, but it will. Then ask yourself the question, feel the pain of the hook, bam, right? Wow, that hurt. But then ask yourself the question, what's good about this? What's good about this? Now, realistically, sometimes the first answer is going to be, not a damn thing is good about this, James. You're full of it, and don't give me that crap. You know, I've heard that, right? All right, so this is where it takes the mental muscle and the discipline that I talked about, the hardest work. What could be good about it if I wanted it to be good? Well, you know, one thing that could be good is that I can take a punch. I took it, and I'm still here, and I'm still thinking. You know, one thing that could be good is that I didn't lose my teeth. One thing that could be good is that I'm still standing. You know, even if it's small, what is good about this and you can take your mess and turn it into a message you follow that when life hits you with a right hook take the mess and turn it into a message number three how can i use this this is another question you're going to ask yourself how can i use this situation to develop advance and grow How can I use this to develop, advance, and grow? Well, I can use it by learning new strategies and skills. I can use it by becoming bigger, better, faster, stronger. I can use this by being more proactive next time. I can use this by understanding how the world works. I can use this, you know, I could go on, but I think you get the point. How can I use this to develop, advance, and grow and create a better life moving forward? Because you see... 
Truth told, your greatest teacher is most probably your last mistake. That's how we learn. That's how we learn. And then the fourth thing, and then we got another question, and if you guys need to go, then, you know, you can come back and pick it up because I want to grab this other question. It looks like it's from Francisco. Francisco, hey, buddy. Good to see you again. Thank you for tuning in. Number four tip, real quick, is what I call G3. G3 is a gratitude practice that I have used for longer than I can remember. It's just on autopilot, automaticity as well. It's habituated. I call it G3. First thing in the morning, you heard me talk about this in The Secret. You know, when I get out of bed and my feet come over the edge of the bed, I say to myself, thank you. Even when life seems to be going shit sideways, I say thank you. And I discipline myself to think about three things I'm grateful for. And sometimes, quite frankly, it could just be that I woke up. Right? It, it could just be I'm grateful that I'm breathing. It could just be, I'm grateful that I had covers because it was chilly last night. I mean, it could be something simple, but because life is really hitting you with some curveballs. But there's always something to be grateful for. And then, three things, because the way you start your day says a lot about how you will finish. And then, at the finish, G3, as I lay on my pillow at night and I say my prayers and I do my visualizations, then I always ask myself, as I reflect on the day, three things I'm grateful for for that day. Three things I'm grateful for. Because here's a little tip. The last thing you give to your unconscious before you go to sleep at night for six, seven, eight hours, whatever you sleep. Some people sleep nine or ten hours. I don't get that. But, <laughs> you know, it, 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 we sleep 33% of our life away the way it is. But nonetheless... You know, the last thing you give to your unconscious before you go to sleep at night is what it has to work with for the balance of the evening. And what most people do is end their night in a mental mind of crap, right? Focusing on all the things that, you know, stressing about their bills and all the things that aren't right and how this and how tired I am and how I'm not getting enough sleep and how I'm overworked and blah, blah, blah. All right? No, not you. Not anymore. G3. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, give your unconscious something beautiful to work with for the balance of the evening. I'm going to take this question um, real quick. If you need to check out, you can come back and get it. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Francisco, my buddy, how you keep being patient with those small steps when you're coming close to the goal. It's not as fast as you thought it, it should be or as you want. Francisco. Let me tell you something, man. You know, I don't know how many years you've been on this on this planet, but I'm going to be on this planet 59 years this month. I have a birthday this month, 59 years. I can hardly believe it. You know, it, it goes like that. But let me tell you what my 59 years of experience prove, not only in my own life, but also in interviewing people who have been on this planet close to 100 years. It never comes as fast as you want it to come. Never. And that's where you've got to develop the gratitude and the mental muscle. That's where you've got to have faith. And, you, and you've got to understand that there's a grander plan. I'll give you a, a quick little story and then we're going to jump out. I visualize being on Oprah for the better part of 20 years. All the time. For some reason, intuitively, I just knew I was going to be on Oprah, and that was my intention, and I had it out there, and I visualized it, and I, you know, for a long time, I would watch her show, and, and I would envision myself sitting on the couch next to her, and her talking to me, and asking me questions, even though I was watching it on television, I put myself into the TV, and onto her couch, and I did this practice for a long, long time, and many times I, I thought, this isn't going to work, and this is crazy, and this is stupid, and in fact, you know, someone in my industry once, who you think would be supportive, <laughs> I, I was sharing with him. I was frustrated. I was like, God, you know, I've been at this for so long, and, and, I, and I just I feel like I need to be on Oprah and share my message. And he said, James, James, let, come on, let's be frank. You're, you're never going to be on Oprah. <laughs> he, he said, you're, you're not mainstream enough. Okay, well, 
you know, thank God I had some resilience because in my mind, I said to myself, not to him, I said to myself, hey, baby, I'm the new mainstream, all right? You just don't know it yet. The world doesn't know it yet. And I kept working, and I kept working, and I kept improving. I wasn't just sitting around visualizing. I was studying. I was going to conferences. I was studying with teachers. I was having mentors. I was investing a major portion of every dollar I made back into my own book growth and development. And then, then, in 2000, um, it was seven or eight, I was on Oprah. And after almost 20 years, and when I was on Oprah... I sat there on that couch for real, not just in my mind, and I, it just struck me. It's so perfect that I'm here now. Because had I gotten it, Francisco, had I gotten it when I thought I wanted it, I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have had enough experience. I wouldn't have had enough wisdom. I wouldn't have had you know, enough to share. I wouldn't have had the right message. There was something bigger than me that had a grand plan. And, you know, I, our job, your job, my job is to surrender to that, to have faith in that, and to show up and do the work every single day. Hope that helps, man. It's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would be at the top of their game. But you're more than that. So... Hey, thanks for the live questions, guys. I know this is long, but you know, <laughs> I'm notorious for going long. So thanks for tuning in. Share it with your family and friends. And I appreciate all your comments. If you have more questions, put them below, and I'll get back to them after the fact, like I always do. Until we speak again, as always, stay awake, low life, and be epic.